Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dani and today I'm gonna talk about the books that I read in May. Overall, May was a great reading month. I read seven books and I think four of them were five stars, at least five stars on Goodreads, 4.5 or five stars. So really good. And then I had two 3.5 stars that I rounded up to four stars on Goodreads and one two stars that I really didn't like. So let's talk about them in the order that I least to most liked. I think that's a good plan. So we get the bad out of the way. So the book that I gave two stars this month that I really didn't like it was The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is a story about a girl who moved from India to England to live with her uncle and she's very, very spoiled. She's really not a nice girl. She doesn't have a parental figure ever in her life. I don't think she had a one when she was in India, but I think her parents died. That's why she moved. There was a disease or I don't know. But she moved to England and the story already starts there and we're just following her doing nothing, growing plants in a garden. The main reason why I didn't like this book was because it literally nothing happens. There's no point. There's no conflict. There's no like you're not trying to get somewhere. But also I felt that it was very racist, uh, very problematic in different ways. Those things are not handled here very well in my opinion. And it was just not a nice experience. I wouldn't recommend it as a middle grade, like for children to read. But if you're curious about it because it's a classic, then sure. But I would not recommend this to children. And then the two books that I gave 3.5 and rounded up to four stars were Today, Tonight, Tomorrow and Breach of Peace. Uh, I don't have, like, these are very different. I don't have a preference between them. So we'll just start with Breach of Peace. This book was written by Daniel Green. He also has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna link that in the description. This is a novella, very, very short novella. Uh, that's the beginning of a very long series that he's writing. And it starts with this detectives, inspectors, they have different names here but they are investigating a murder that happened in one of the royal families. So this is very much a murder mystery at the same time that is fantasy and it is in a different world from our own and it's very gory, very brutal, but I really enjoyed it. I think the characters were really cool and just overall the plot was very intriguing. I described this on my Goodreads review saying that it's at the same time that it is the it feels like the beginning of a really epic story because of the things that happened here. It also would work well if it's just a short story with no continuation because it would be just a mysterious thing that you don't have all the answers for at all, but you just like have that on the back of your mind, like what's, what really happened? So I think it would work as a short story and just end there. Well, not a novella, I guess, but it, it also really feels like the beginning of an epic story and I'm really curious to continue. So the only thing that made me give it 3.5, I even ran it to 4, but I was really just confused about the world building. There's not a lot of explanation, which makes sense for a book this short, but I'm really curious to continue with the series and I'm really expecting it to go much deeper in the world building and all the things that happen here that I can't say because it'll be a spoiler. So I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it. Then Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This was in my advent calendar books. I don't usually read YA contemporaries or any romances, but this one surprised me a lot. I think I was really craving some something like this after reading so many epic fantasies. But the story here is that it's graduation day and the girl is trying to beat the boy in everything. Like they're both the best in their classes, always first and second in the class. And we see in her perspective that she's always trying to beat him, to be the best one. So they have kind of like this frenemy kind of relationship. She really hates him and we just go from there while well, they start spending more time with each other because there's a game here which I didn't know and didn't expect and it was really fun to follow. So they have to do kind of like a scavenger hunt in Seattle, which was a lot of fun. So just overall I thought it was very relatable. It's a book that I would have wanted to read when I was a teenager and I thought it was very realistic with the way that they de dealt with many of the situations and I just enjoyed it a lot. It was not something that changed my life but I really enjoyed it and I would recommend as a YA contemporary romance if you're looking for one. And then all the others were 4.5 or 5 stars. 
Um, there's one that I actually gave five stars in my own spreadsheet that was the best one. The other ones were 4.5, rounding up to five on Goodreads, but they were still really amazing. But if I would put them in the order, I would say the lowest 4.5 would be Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in the Illuminae Files series. The first one starts with this couple who had just broken up and they have to fly from their country in a spaceship and some weird stuff starts happening. There's other political things happening behind their own story and it was really good. Uh, and this one I think it was better because I really like the mixed media format. This is written in a very unique way and I really like it. It's a very quick read despite how big it is. And I felt like this one was more immersive and I feel like the mixed media was used even better than in the first and that's why it was a higher rating for me than Illuminae. And in this one we're following a completely different couple, still YA, uh, two teenagers, one that is dating, the girl's dating a guy in the ship and then the guy that we're following here is kind of flirting with her and their friends and we're following that but then I can't say much, I don't want to say more because it's a second book but it of course there's much more happening here, there's a lot of action and it was really really awesome. And then I don't know which order I would put this to because I really enjoyed them and they are really different. So I'm just going to talk first about the book that was released a long time ago and then the new release. Let's just go with that. So The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. 4.5, 5 stars for me. It was amazing. I'm so glad I finally started the series. So this one tells a story of a lot of different things. Basically in this world people can be born with a power that can uh, basically move the earth tectonic plates and just create earthquakes and stuff like that and just mess up with the whole world uh, and that's a power that people have from when they're babies if they're born with this power they have it from when, from when they're babies there's a school here as well so if there are three different chapters that we follow and in one of the parts we are following a school for the skeets, so like magic school, really a lot of fun. And in one of the other parts, the part is written in a second person, so it's really interesting and it was something that bothered me a little in the beginning, just took me a little bit to get used to, but eventually I just couldn't understand how it could be different than that, like it felt so comfortable and normal and appropriate should be written in second person that it just it it just flew by and I really loved that. I really love the twist. I did not see it coming for the most part and I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in the next book. I don't know how do we go how we go from here to the next book. I don't know what to expect. But I really enjoyed it. I can't say much of the plot and I would definitely recommend it if you like different fantasies. It's very different. And then the other one that was 4.5, 5 stars for me, which is a new release, is The Ones Romance You'll Find by John E. This is definitely sci-fi, futuristic sci-fi. We're following two sisters who are separated and they're kind of trying to find their way to each other. And this book is filled with twists. And most of them, I, no, I don't know, a lot of them I didn't see coming, some I saw coming, but I still wanted to know how it was going to happen. And I just love that. It. It's very character focused on the two sisters. We don't get a lot of explanation about how we got here, what happened, what is going on, but they are just a delight to follow and I just wanted to see what was going to happen to them because I was, I was getting very attached to them. It has a beautiful writing. It's crafted perfectly in the way that everything fits in the end and I just really loved it. I would definitely recommend if you're looking for more of a slow sci-fi with more of a character focus but still filled with action and twists and beautiful writing. That's that's all I can say. I really loved it. I want to reread it. And then the last one, the one that I gave complete five stars to, it's kind of cheating a little bit because I actually read half of the book in May. I read the first half in January and then I finished it in May and that's The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. So I did not read it in this edition 
I read it on this one, the special letter bound editions that I got on Kickstarter when he was doing the special 10 year anniversary of The Way of Kings. I read it on these editions and they are really, really nice. Have more images, more pictures, art than this one. Uh, the font is bigger and has more margins. Like it, The book, when you join both the books, it's 200 pages longer than this one because it it's, there's just more space in the pages, more blank space. And it was just overall a very nice experience to read in those editions, but now I will have to continue the series in the normal paperbacks, which are also nice. They're floppy, so that's, that's what matters. But The Way of Kings, how can I <laughs> explain what this is about? This is a very gigantic epic fantasy. The world is huge. We follow quite a few different characters. Mostly the three, but then we have like chapters about other people that are in opposite ends of the world doing other stuff. But we mostly follow three people, three main people, Kaladin, Shalon, and Dalinar. And each of them are doing different, completely different things. They are not together. And we just follow it very slowly. If you can imagine, not, there's not a lot that happens in this book. And it's still, it's not a slow book and it's not hard to read, it's very very easy read, very quick read for, for what it is, but not a lot of story happens, mostly because we go back and forth uh, in the past of these characters, mostly Kaladin, and trying to understand a lot of what's happening now with him and what was happening in his past, so because of that his present doesn't go much further <laughs> because we're going back to the past to understand everything, but still, there's so much character development here for all of this. I don't want to say much. I went into this book without knowing anything at all. I didn't know what the magic system was about. I didn't know the characters. I didn't know anything. And I thought it was an amazing experience. I just knew it was an epic fantasy that everyone loves. Uh, and I have read Brandon Sanderson before, so I trusted that the length of the book was not going to be an issue. And it wasn't. It was, it was awesome. It was five stars. And I really want to continue the series. I don't know what much more I can say about this because I would want people to go into it as blind as possible to really experience a lot of what this is. For like the magic system here is not very well explained yet, but we get enough explanation to understand it as we go, and we don't need much else. And we get the explanation as the characters are also learning about a lot of things. So I think it goes really well that way, that you don't really need to know what it is about. I don't know if I would recommend it as your first Brendan Sanderson book, because you have to just trust that he's going somewhere that's going to make sense, because there's a lot of questions that you have when you're reading this book. It just opens the world more and more as you go. Uh, there's a lot that he hints at, but then never goes back to, and I don't know. If it was the first book, I would just be very confused and I don't know if I would trust that he was going to answer that question, those questions, but I am trusting him. And so just for the foreshadowing of what's going to come next, this is complete five stars. And I would definitely recommend it, but maybe read Mistborn first or even just Warbreaker so you can get a sense of how he does the foreshadowing and how great he is at endings and just how everything fits together in the, in the end and just you know what I mean it was really good really really good that said these were all the books that I read in May I actually read two of these were in my June TBR but I read them in the end of the uh, end of May which were Today Tonight Tomorrow and Bridge of Peace and yeah it was a really great reading month in June I'm going to be reading The Eye of the World the first book in the Wheel of Time series and also Red Rising by Chris Bro Pierce Brown. Uh, I almost said Chris Brosnan, no, Chris Brown. There's a lot of cool things coming up, so do subscribe, and remember to like this video, and I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for joining me. Bye.